Welcome to Games Overboard. I'm PJ. I'm Shanna. I lost a Lego piece. Um. Tried to. Oh. I wasn't sure if that was like you tell me you lost your marbles nope. or not, because nope. that would hurt to step on. Literally lost. A Lego I like piece. how the Lego piece you have is a wrench. It's a claw thing. Wrench. It's no. supposed to be a wrench. No, it's used for like connecting little rods and stuff like that. Do you see the quotes I'm making with my claw hands? <laughs> <laughs> not sure why it's on the floor. We have children. Yeah. It's not a ghost, even though we are in the it's well house. Not, yeah. <laughs> Holy water, we're good. Well house exorcism, shout out right there. <laughs> so anyways, it's just us. Hi. Dan couldn't make it. I miss Dan. I actually yeah. miss Angie. We lost him to the war. What about Angie? <laughs> can we can we have her back at least? Yeah, I think she's celebrating somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, it's just me and Shanna now. <laughs> Get rid of PJ, just one more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what are we talking about tonight, sir? We are talking about Red Dragon Inn. The RDI, as it's called online. I looked it's... it up. It is? I don't know why, but yes. Everyone calls it RDI. Well, I mean, it's a lot easier than typing out Red Dragon Inn. <laughs> I guess. But it sounds fancy when you say the Red Dragon Inn. Yeah. So uh, this was introduced to us by two friends. Yes, our friends Tom and Carrie. Shout out to them. Yep. And because we never do this and we always sit, we always kick ourselves, the designers for the Red Dragon Inn are Cliff Bohm, Jeff, but spelled G off, which is fancy, Jeff Baton, Baton, Baton. Button. But no, baton. I think but, it's baton. Baton, and Colleen Scattle. Artists <laughs> were Ken and James, Doug Kovacs, Rhonda Libby, Team Cold Fusion, and Beth Trot. And of course, the publisher is Slugfest Games. Now cool. take it away. So Red Dragon Inn is a um, a drinking game, not a literal yeah. drinking game. It's uh, I, I think is a like, game it's not about. Party wanted. <laughs> it is a game about <laughs> drinking. Uh, and so you are people at this inn in a tavern and you're all competing, having a drinking contest. And it's like D and D people. That's almost like you've yeah. come back from fighting the dragons and or whatever. Celebrating yeah, you're relaxing in a tavern. So, you know, you can be dimly the dwarf or Zot the wizard and his rabbit pookie. Yeah. You could be Deirdre, the priestess, Fiona, the volatile. Cause there's a couple of base games after that. You can buy expansions. Mm-hmm. There's also Gog the Half Ogre, which I found to be adorable. Gog is great. <laughs> Gog is really good. Uh, so as you're playing, you have health and um, alcohol content. Oh, yeah, fortitude. Yeah, fortitude is your health. And then you have your alcohol content. And um, picture a circle with... Or like a clock, maybe. A clock, yeah, with 20 where the 11 would be. And one where the one, one is. where the one is. And they both count, like, you know, you, you track on two different sides. Yeah, so you're going cl- clockwise and counterclockwise. Yeah, your fortitude's on the left, your alcohol content's on the right. And if they ever meet, then you're out. You, you know, your your constitution is gone and you pass out drinking. Yeah, because your fortitude drops, obviously, the more you drink, right? Because, yeah. and then the, the, more you dr- the more you drink, I should say. Your alcohol say, content goes up. Uh, yes, uh, the number goes up. So that's why it makes sense when the numbers go down and up, because the way the numbers are tracking, alcoholism yeah. goes up, fortitude goes down. Um, you can gain some of that back. Mm-hmm. You can also, you know, make your peers, your friends at the table lose their fortitude and yeah, gain you, their alcohol you can buy contact. other people drinks <laughs> you can skip your drink there's also a gambling thing you can yeah. do uh, so and there's can, lots like, of ways to lose one is to um have your little um and i don't know what you want to call them like the little your trackers are not wooden pieces like the euro games they're i they're always glass see them beads in, yeah i always see them in fish tanks <laughs> fish tanks or arts pe- and crafts who, yeah, arts and crafts uh i know them from the old Greek board game Penti. Oh, yeah, Penti. I didn't think about that. Penti yeah. uses those. Yeah. And I like that, too, because when you put them on, it feels fancy because they're heavy. But also, you can see the numbers underneath it. Cause yeah, the, glass the numbers the curl through the through the glass. And that way, when you get confused with fortitude and alcoholism, fortitude's a heart. And so your um, circle, your glass bead, is red to match the heart. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, the alcoholism is like water so it's white or it's clear i should say yeah i like that a lot mm-hmm. but that's not the only way you can lose you can also lose if you run out of money you get kicked out of the tavern because you can no longer buy booze so you can, that can happen to you or you can have your beads meet 
Remember? Yeah. I didn't know about the money thing because I must have missed that. Well, I'm... it wasn't an issue for you because you always had money. Yeah. <laughs> Carrie's like, I'm I was in wondering why like, Carrie was freaking out. Like, yeah, you won't be able to play cards if we do a gambling thing. But I'm like, what's your problem? No, nope. <laughs> because the idea is you don't die. You don't pa- like if you pass out. If you if your alcoholism catches up to you, um, they kick you out of the tavern because mm-hmm. you're done. And then if you have money, you're kicked out because you can't buy any more booze. Yep. So. I thought that was kind of funny, but like, there's lots of ways for you to get your your friends so you can win. Mm-hmm. It's not co-op at all. <laughs> no, lots of take that cards. I actually, pretty much only take yeah. that cards. <laughs> um, so this is not a game for people who don't like those kinds of cards, but it doesn't have that. Uh, we've talked about before that gameplay loop in Munchkin. Probably in Here to Slay, if we play that more too, mm-hmm. where. When you get to the end of the game, people just start, like, yeah, pa- you know, like, dogpiling on you. You can't really you do can't. that in this game. Because you're using your cards up every round because people are always trying to make you drink booze yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, like, so I figured well, there was, like, one round we were playing and you, you hold seven cards in your hand and I kept attacking you and you were attacking me back. <laughs> and so when we finished, whenever it was reconciled, I looked at what was left and I go, I only have two cards until my turn. Yeah. I'm in danger. <laughs> And that's when Tom's like, yeah, you probably shouldn't use up all your cards as soon as you draw them. And I was like, well, now I know. Yeah, and I was down to two also because I was defending myself yeah. from your attacks the whole time. It was fun. But my turn was right coming up after you. So I yeah, you come after I was me. doing okay because yeah. I was just going to draw right back up. But you, no, I had, to sit you had to wait for three other people to go through their turns with just two cards in your hand. But I still won. <laughs> <laughs> so jokes on you. <laughs> all right, um, so that's... I mean, that's essentially how the game plays. You just play cards and you know, you gamble for money. And uh... and so that there's different decks. You have your character deck. And so you have to choose if you want to be like Deirdre or Fiona. When you get the base game, you get um, four characters. Mm-hmm. And so there's, I think there's two different base games they were telling us. But one... At least ha- two, yeah. yeah. And then there's expansions. Yeah. And so um, there's... I want to say in the original, it's Deirdre the Priestess, Fiona the Volatile... Is it Gierke, the sneak? The, that's the thief, so. Gierke. And then Zot the wizard with? With Pookie. Pookie. I love there's this rabbit. <laughs> um, yeah, Pookie is the, the Vorpal bunny from Monty Python. Yeah. So like, that's what he is. It's so cute. Um, And then they had a second base game, or because it def- or maybe it was an expansion, I'm not sure. It's it's both. It's a standalone expansion. So, so it has, like, it has the player mats. It has all the cards you need. So you can buy either one and you'll have a working yeah, so game. So I did the research. There's a lot there's many different types of base games and then there's expansions. You have to have at yeah. least one base game. Yeah. And so they have two base games. So the one that we played out of also had Gog the Half Ogre and Dimly the Dwarf instead of Gimli, which I thought yep. was hilarious. Um but then you also get your playing mats, which I thought were great. Like they're they're mm-hmm, very solid. Mm-hmm. They're not wood. They're not cardboard. Yeah, they're it just, was a thick plastic. Yeah. I guess. Almost like a laminated plastic it, too. Yeah, it was it was laminated. Like cardboard. Thick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so you get your character deck, and so you only use your cards. And so when you're playing cards on somebody else, you have to collect mm-hmm. your cards back to put them in your discard pile. Yeah. And then there's also the drinking deck as well, yep. because you have to do rounds of. Because the idea is like you drink yourself till you're, you know, unconscious. Silly. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not actually drinking alcohol. Um, but the cards can have like coffee, so you might regain your fortitude if you drink coffee mm-hmm. or holy water. Holy water. <laughs> or, yeah, holy water. Uh, so yeah, I. I can't speak on the quality of the cards because they're all sleeved. Oh, we, I so we can't that. tell yeah. you if the, if the cards were of good quality or not. Uh, I will say this game, uh, people who, if you're listening to a board game podcast, you're probably aware that there used to be monthly subscription boxes that would send out random board games. And this is actually one of those games yeah. that these two, you know, this couple got. And... Uh, and they ended up like they said it was the only good game that they got yeah. from one from the subscription box. So I wonder why those subscription <laughs> subscription boxes like you know went out of business. Hmm. hmm. Well, it's funny because you know I had said like you know what we I wanted to play a co op game because we played Party Wanted and I just loved it so much and I like the idea of it being proactive us all playing together just like D and D. I wanted us to like have a fun time, and they said, well, we brought Saboteur again, but um. We don't really do co-op, <laughs> so this is the best we got. 
And so when they started explaining, like, oh, it sounds kind of like Party Wanted. I wonder if that's where Eric got his idea. Yeah, no. No. Because <laughs> in no way are you being cooperative. Yeah. You're not fighting any monsters. You're literally sitting around a, a tavern table, try, like, trying to get your friends drunk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, which is funny because you can, like, buy a round, for, you know, for everybody. You can, like, my character could spike your water. So it's like spike spike with uh, the fire water. And like one of the comments was, this is what my mother used to feed me when I was a baby. Like, you know, <laughs> the comments on my car. The flavor text is so good in this game. Well, look, it was um, Gerke, the the sneak. He would, literally the card says, giving you a Mickey. Like he would slip a Mickey <laughs> in your drink. <laughs> and so it like made your alcohol like more potent or whatever. Oh, that was a lot of fun. Yep. I, the one thing is um, if you have a hard time reading like if you're dyslexic mm-hmm. or if you're an english language learner this game is 100 percent text dependent there yeah. is no iconography in it it's all text yeah uh so that is something for people to be aware of um that you know you need to be pretty fluent in yeah. english to play this game i wonder if there's any prints in other languages yeah probably yeah but but yeah this is something that you can't like um Like, most card games have suits and symbols on them, Mm -hmm. so as long as you know what those symbols mean, anyone can play the game. Not this one. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, the only thing that would be okay is the drinking cards, unless it's the event cards. Yeah, they have symbols Yeah, the regular booze cards will say, like, you know, here's Alvin Wine, so it's like, you know, plus two alcoholism, zero, four, two, whatever. And it's just the heart with a zero. Yeah, heart with plus one. Or or minus one or or minus one. So that one's easy, because you can match that. But um, But your actual cards in your yeah. hand well and those drinking event cards you might get with the wench on the picture oh yeah it's like it's a whole card of text yeah so yeah oh yeah and it's a lot of like fun reading on your own because you're looking at your cards and you're giggling <laughs> yeah yeah but that that yeah that was that was something i want the listeners to be aware of is because when i was looking at them, i'm like oh no like usually card games with lots of text on the cards like that is like mm, this may not be good but yeah there were a couple this, this times when, a... like, someone played a card. I'm like, no, no, stop. I got to read this. <laughs> <laughs> there was one time went, uh, Tom was playing Gog the Ogre, and he played a card. And I don't know what it was called exactly, but it was an action card. And uh, it was, he gives you all a bear hug because he just wants to show his love because his ogre is just the <laughs> happiest, nicest guy in the whole world. And I was like, I have a card to stop him hurting because the bear hug was so hard. It took away it one away of your, your fortitude. <laughs> And I'm like, I have a card to stop it, but I want a bear hug that cracks my back like that. And I lose a health. I'm going to take the pain. That was probably the sweetest thing in the whole world because all of his cards were just so sweet. And it was like, Gog, Gog, no make you, what was it like, Gog, no be funny or Gog, no tell joke. It was like, something like that. Gog was upset remember. because you wouldn't laugh at his jokes and stuff. Oh my gosh. And all the cards were like specific to those people. So like, the sneak Garricky, all of his cards were like really like he had a lot of cheat cards to cheat mm-hmm, at gambling. Mm-hmm. He was slipping Mickey's to people. My character had a, like a lot of dwarf jokes. And I remember playing the uh, it's an action card where he like fights you and he goes, "Are you saying I'm grumpy?" And he, like, he's <laughs> angry. And then like or like let's do some dwarven uh, what was it wrist wrestling and oh stuff. the wrist wrestling <laughs> and so he takes away your fortitude from that. Um, or like if you would try to slip him alcohol, he would he, there was a card that would stop the effects of a drink. And it said, oh, my mother used to give me harsher stuff when I was a baby. <laughs> and so, like, it's just the phrases. You had a couple for Pookie, too. Oh, Pookie, yeah, because, like, you know, you're just this magician and this white rabbit that comes out of your hat just wreaks havoc on everything. So, uh, there's one that's like, no, Pookie, that's our friend. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, like yeah, and one person loses, like, two health, I think it is. There's another one where Pookie just bites everyone around the table one time. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't contain him. <laughs> Uh, what was that? There was one too, like, oh no, Pookie, Pookie, don't eat that or yeah, don't nope. drink that, <laughs> and so that like protects you, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. You can stop if someone gives you a drink card and say like, you have to drink this. You can be like, nope, and yeah, but, every, but your card. Said. Every character has their own nope card, and for the wizard, it's no P- Pookie, don't drink that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, we had so much fun laughing at the cards. Yeah. The uh, I really like some. Uh, if someone takes your money, one of your nope cards is uh, for the wizard. Oh, what's that behind your ear? <laughs> and you get one of your coins back. <laughs> it's so cute. Well, and in one of the expansions, Pookie has his own card deck. His so own you can deck. Just play Pookie now, which I find interesting. 
As soon as we're done playing it, I just said, yeah, we're going to go buy this at White Knights. We're done. Yeah. <laughs> so shout out to White Knights. <laughs> so because I hear they have like an entire section of just expansion. Like a whole corner of just this game. Yeah, uh, we're definitely going to buy it. And we're going to sleeve all of our cards because I felt so bougie with those cards and sleeves. I love sleeves. Yeah, that felt very fancy. So we discussed the stories they tell. What else do you want to talk about? So, um... The artwork was great. So yeah, what works and what doesn't work are up next. I can't think of anything that doesn't work. It was all... I mean, because yeah. you play an action, and so you can gamble. You don't have to. And there's different types of action cards. Mm -hmm. If you don't have an action card in your hand, you can just skip that. You don't have to do it. Yeah. Yeah, and the way the game works is uh, you have to have a hand of seven. So at the start of your turn... Like, there are four phases to your turn. First, you can discard cards to get new ones back up to seven. Mm -hmm. Then I didn't you... discard a single card. I did near the end. I started discarding because I had all these gambling cards. Oh. And I had so much money. I'm like, I don't need this. <laughs> gotcha. So, uh, first, you can discard and draw and redraw new ones. Then, after that, you play an action. Then, after that, you draw a drinking card from the deck and give it to someone mm -hmm. you don't then look at it though you don't look at it then after that you drink one of the cards that's on your player mat yeah that's it that's that's the game i see if you resolve I love that. that yeah so I, that works the, the the flow of the game works so well the only thing that doesn't work for me is that it's very text dependent you mm -hmm. know like you're reading sentence like multiple sentences on one card sometimes yeah oh my gosh there's paragraphs on some <laughs> i'm still confused over the event cards of the drinking contests thank goodness we had tom and carrie to explain i'm like just tell me what to do and i'll do it <laughs> so yeah i guess you're right i guess it does that doesn't work for me but i'm sure if we watch like an intro video like tom and carrie were great they explained it all for us yeah so, like, i we mean can pick this up and play it and teach our friends i now. can yeah we can teach it to people for sure but i feel like you have to know your character then like you have to get used to your deck like it takes more than one play of me playing dimly the dwarf to know like all of the ins and outs of his character that's even what they said too they're like yeah you won't be discarding cards until near the end of the game when you start getting used to what they can do mm -hmm. and that's exactly what happened for me you know and and that actually that's a good sign in a game when you don't fully explore the game your first time through because that just means there's there's value to playing it again and again yeah. and again. Well, then if you get bored playing the same four characters, go get an expansion. Exactly. Like, I want to yeah. play Pookie now, and Pookie's going to drink that. <laughs> I want to see what happens when Pookie does. Um, I think what worked for me is it's not like – it's just like a Party Wanted – where you can play but also have a conversation at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's not, like, so super aggressive that you have to be there and be, be present in the game completely and, like, know where your markers are. It was just – it was nice to sit and talk to friends and play the game. Yeah. And it got a little cutthroat near the end, of course, because I took out Tom. Now, Carrie took out you, right? Yes. And then I yeah. took out Carrie. Yeah, she yeah. did. Yeah. Because she tried taking out me and I got a little nervous. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm in danger. Um, so, but even then, like when, you know, Tom was the first out, he wasn't upset. Like he was there still explaining the card game because you're, like, you're still a part of the game. You get to enjoy it, you yeah. know? Oh, yeah. That is something that won't work for people, though, is elimination. A lot of people don't like elimination games because there is, we play with two people, which means that, or four people, which means that two people were, you know, me and Tom were sitting waiting for the game to end yeah you know but it's a short game well, so I feel like once per one person's bad. gone it goes fast yeah because like it wasn't i mean tom was gone was out but i, I attacked him pretty quickly <laughs> yeah yeah but when it got down because i think it was only maybe three more rounds after he lost that you were out and then mm -hmm. it was just carrie and i were done Then it was only like one it goes two rounds quickly. after that yeah but again, like if you're there with a party of friends and you're just eating food and drinking yeah like, that's it, fine yeah because you're just in the company of your friends and if it was problem. more than four people, though, I think it would be pretty unruly. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend this game for more than four. And I'm not sure. I don't have the box in front of me if it even goes up beyond four because the base game has four characters. I, it, I mean, it probably supports as many characters as there are expansions, mm. really. I don't know who would want to do that, but... <laughs> No, I thought four was a good number. Yeah. Two wouldn't be enough. Three would be okay, but I thought four was a good number. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So anything else you want to talk about, sir? Uh, no, I I recommend this game. Like, I really mm -hmm. didn't think this would be a standout game, you know? And obviously they didn't either. It came from a mystery box. <laughs> uh, but this surprised everyone. And I, I see why they 
took the time to sleeve all the cards and buy expansions and things like that. And cause... apparently has longevity because this game has to be close to 20 years old now. Yeah. Because me, I think in the early 2000s. But, like, you're talking, if, if there's an entire, like, section of White Knights dedicated to it, there is a following to it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It makes all... The, again, if you're a D&D player, you understand all the references. If you're a nerd, you understand the references, mm -hmm. you know? Because yeah. there's Lord of the Rings jokes and there's... Well, Pookie, of course, isn't from Lord of the Rings. That's from, you know, Monty Python. But, I mean, it, it feels like a and d sesh. Yeah. You know? It does. Yep. Yeah. I, I recommend it. Mm -hmm. I, if you're... A, if you want a new confrontational game, something like a filler game, to, you know, in oh, between your bigger games, yeah. this is such a good way to go. And it's a good quality. It's a good quality game. Yeah. Like in terms of like the stuff you're going to get. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah. Short, short yeah, review for you guys, but it, it's a short game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and again, it's kind of nice to go off of after Party Wanted then too, because they came in. I was like, oh, it's going to be like Party Wanted. Oh, no, this nope. is nothing like it. It's a drinking game, but it's not a drinking yep. game. <laughs> and speaking of congratulations to Eric Lorton. 24 for less than 24 hours. Less than 24 hours. Already made their first stretch goal as well. Yeah. Oh, I'm so happy for him. So uh, for those who have followed the channel, you know we interviewed him with his game party wanted. And We've got a demo copy. We Yeah, we have a demo copy here <laughs> that I happened to win by... That was crazy. Really crazy <laughs> circumstance. <laughs> but yeah that was not a cheat that was com that was completely random <laughs> we, we were so excited and uh so yeah he just added new stretch goals of sleeves oh, yay. he's gonna add sleeves to if awesome. they reach you know a certain amount of yeah get on kickstarter and backing. you should definitely back party wanted it was the most fun we've had in a while yep and it's cooperative we played that with tom and carrie first and they enjoyed it a lot and then we went to the Red Dragon Inn, and it's a completely different feel, but again, just a lot of fun to do that, too. Yep. And uh, so this episode is going to air Monday the 24th, tomorrow, Tuesday the 25th, Seismic hits Kickstarter. Oh, yes! At 10 a.m. Eastern Time. So... And it has very tall towers. <laughs> So I can't wait. I can't wait to see how that Kickstarter goes. I really hope oh, it goes so well. So wonderful. Yeah. I'm just so happy for these guys. Yeah. So um, and uh, conspiracy is going strong. It's not going as quickly as uh, party wanted. So listeners out there, like, consider backing that, help them out because we want to play that game. I want to play that game so bad. <laughs> we really want to <laughs> play that game. So please, please share share that game with everyone and get the word out there. And hop on our Facebook and you'll see it on there to share. Yeah, we've been sharing links yep. on our Facebook page and uh, we'll continue to do so as these uh, all these games hit Kickstarter and, you know, continue to go and through. And if you're a Kickstarter who wants to be interviewed, hit us up. Send yep. us a message. Yep, we'll yep, do yep. it. Yep. We love hearing about new games. Yep. So please email us at gamesoboard at gmail.com. Or hop on our website, which is? Gamesoverboard.com. Or find us on Facebook, which is? Games Overboard. <laughs> Just keep I love doing that with you. <laughs> <laughs> also listen to our other podcasts. The Wellhouse Exorcism. Where we talk about our real haunted house and the real exorcism that we had done in it. And then we stretch out to Pennsylvania and discuss all the different areas. Uh, Wellhouse Exorcism also is posting its first ever interview with Kevin Paul, writer of two different books about Greene County, Pennsylvania, and other various novels. Um, we also discuss kind of creepy, thoughtful things. And we just finished a five-part series on Gettysburg and the yeah. hauntings that happened there. It also has its own Twitter page at Wellhouse underscore Exorc. Yep. And lastly, we have a live play D&D &D podcast, Danger and Dice, which um, we just made new theme music for. Mm -hmm. And it's actually starting to gain a following. It's... We're get, we're getting like it's slowly but surely it is gaining popularity. Yeah, that's our YouTube, which is interesting. Our YouTube our channel. YouTube, our YouTube followers are pulling through for that one. We're getting a lot of views on yeah. On that. It's an interesting homebrew. <laughs> oh my god! Like, if you want inappropriate jokes coming at you real fast, <laughs> that's the one to listen to. Because wow, we get inappropriate yeah, instantly. Initially, in there, initially there was just a couple of us playing for fun, and so there's like you know one-offs in there. Yeah. But the four seer campaign session zero from there on, that's my brother's homebrew. We all and play that's where crazy you, that's characters. That's where you want to listen. That's where you want to listen. Oh, my gosh. I, I look forward to Thursdays now to record that game. 
I really do. All right, everyone. So, uh, yeah. Um, thanks for listening. Yeah, Keep in touch next week. Next week, Dan is going to be back, and we're going to review another Stonemeyer game. Oh, yeah. Red Rising, right? Mm-hmm. Ooh. I can't wait. I can't wait. Maybe I'll finish the novel at that point, too. Oh, I'm definitely going to have the novel done by then. Show off. Off of just our 20 page research paper. The, pro- is fine. the problem <laughs> is that the game follows the trilogy, and I'll only have read the first novel. Oh, gotcha. So. I'll- yeah. It's like Lord of the Rings. You have to read all three. You can't just read the first one. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Anywho, <laughs> have a lovely evening. <laughs> yep. Thanks, everyone, for listening, and we will talk to you next week. Bye, everyone. Au revoir.